Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. Reacts, reviews, whatever's Discovery Season 5. And today is Episode 4, and I'm your host, Sean. That over there is Brian, and by goodness, we are happy to see you guys with us again today. What's up, After everybody? A, yeah, a little brief uh, hiatus and whatnot, but... Um, yeah, so here we are with Discovery, uh, Season 5, Episode 4. And guys, before we get into anything, let me remind you to please hit that subscribe button. Give us some likes, give us some dislikes, leave us some comments. Give us a little tickle. Yep, just a little bit. Give us some interaction. And uh, we'd like to thank the new subscribers for joining us recently. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, so... Uh, here we are at episode four, and it is entitled, Brian, do you have the title? I don't. You should know better. I know. Face the Strange. Yeah, I was putting you to the test. That was for last week. I caught yeah. him off guard last week with the title. I was, I was thinking, surely you he'll keep be doing it. you got to keep catching me off guard. <laughs> I'll get you to get it. You'll get it next time, for sure. But yeah, it. so <laughs> we start off in... Uh, the episode 15 hours before real time on a planet we know not which i guess it's trill i i haven't put two and two together i suppose it's trill they never right. say I that mean, the math fits right yeah and uh there is a transaction taking place between uh lock and mall and an unknown alien and basically as these kind of transactions would probably go with shady individuals like themselves uh he tries to screw them all over but as usual, they're one step ahead, right? They don't miss a trick, these two. So yeah. uh, they, they poison the latinum that he's holding on to. And uh, he dies a very, very long and slow death. Uh, but they get the item that they were trying to procure. And uh, Locke is starting to show a little bit of concern for uh, what's going on. He says the walls are closing in around him, around them. Them, yeah. And... Uh, and kind of Maul just basically talks him down. Tells him after all this, I have a life of freedom and whatnot. Freedom's good. One yeah. last big score, right? That's <laughs> yeah. that conversation. That's how it always goes with these kind of people, man. One last big score and we're done. We're out. We're retired. Yeah, most of them end up dead. <laughs> well, that's another, another way of saying retired, right? Yeah, exactly. It's definitely <laughs> retirement. So, uh... <clears throat> Honestly, I'd be the same way if I was him. I'd figure the luck have, has got us this far, and they have been very lucky. That that shit's just going to wear out, and yep. uh, I would have, I would have already been done, considering how how lucky they've been. Uh, they'd probably say that it was all just pre thought out and you know pre planned. There wasn't nothing to do They're with that. Luck. Good, <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, we don't really know what the item they stole was other than to put two and two together again with the math and uh, figure it's the controller for the bug they planted. The bug, pun intended. Um, and now we are in the present, 15 hours later. And uh, we are annoyingly put right into a gray and towel telephone call. And we see the bug come to life off her jacket and start crawling around and crawling up the wall and whatnot. And then she's all staring, all goo goo eyed at a picture of the of Tal and Gray together. And uh, she kind of turns around like she hears the bug moving or whatever. Apparently, it's a loud little bug, man. Because <clears throat> it gets the attention. I don't know. I think they're they're trying to make a point that only you you. you like apparently it seemed like Stamus uh saw it too or had an idea yeah, was there did. at some point. Yeah, no, he saw it. That's what I'm saying. It's very clear after after her and then yeah. what Stamets' reaction was that uh it was definitely very loud. Or at least well, you know, that's what I'm got, saying. like it a, like a because it was like right behind people all throughout the, the Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe it's just I don't know. Maybe only certain people are uh, are sensitive to its noise. You know, Maybe. that makes sense, too, because, you yeah. know, like my dad can't hear high-pitched noises and shit. So I guess that would make sense or something. I imagine, I you know, having heard the uh, the Enterprise run 
so so much in my life in real time uh that there are probably noises that the spaceship would make that you would be kind of muted to you you know for sure yeah dead to your ears yeah like being on an aircraft or something like that all the time mm-hmm. there's all kinds of little noises and shit working on a rig yeah you know, yep. little beeps mm-hmm so uh, we move on to the bridge where Burnham is asking for a report of the progress. Uh, you know, of, I don't know. What are they looking for on Trill? I thought they found what they were looking for on Trill. I did, too. Yeah, I didn't I didn't quite understand that. because She was like, you know, did we find what we were looking for or whatever? I don't know if she just means, that, like, you know, lock them all. But then she asks about lock them all. Right. Um, but Olana Wanna Ding Dong is given a bit too lengthy of a report for Commander Rayner's liking, and he interjects, showing his annoyance uh, that they ain't found shit, basically. Right. And uh, Burnham, I said, all you know, she asks about Lock and Maul, so whatever they're doing over there, I have no idea. And Rayner points out that they're around and they need to be vigilant, and then Lieutenant Reese pipes up and says that he thinks that if they, if they were him, he'd lay low and let Discovery lead them to the next location. And uh, they kind of go back and forth. Rainer doesn't really believe that. So uh, we get a shot of the bug listening to it all. And uh, Rainer believes they would know if Lock and Maul were around and says they need to stick to the facts, not guesses. And, of course, he's really matter-of-fact about it and shit. No hugs. No hugs given. Not right now. And then he gets a a look from Burnham instantly, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's... She's looked at him a couple of times, actually, but she finally turns to him, giving him the hairy eyeball and asks to speak to him in the ready room, which they immediately bash transporter or badges, hollow bat, you know, com badges and, and transport in there. They double and, tap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a double tap. That was funny. Uh, and they immediately transport into the ready room where she just starts dressing him down. And uh, one for it. yeah. Yeah, basically for not being more engaging. Engaging is her word. Uh, she wants a bunch of hugging and people sharing all their emotions where, you know, he basically sees as uh, they're just there to do a job and not be overly familiar with each other. And uh, he thinks there's no discipline, and I completely agree with him. I like, dude, as, as this episode uh, unfolded, I kept thinking, man, this motherfucker and I are just uh, <laughs> exactly alike, it seems, in many, many ways. Well, I mean, like, I think it's all agreed that uh, we've never seen a ship run like this before, right? Yeah, no doubt. It's annoying as fuck. I don't like it. <clears throat> you know, even Picard wouldn't have tolerated this familiarity. He did amongst his bridge crew, yeah. you know, they, they, but that was over a period of time too like he was very by the book no kids on the bridge and shit like that <laughs> Wesley. But yeah wesley gets his little foot in the door and he you know he breaks him of that yep. so i mean you know i put it i was like it's the military for christ's sakes it's not a place for hugs man so <clears throat> she expects him to do things her way and he retorts and if my way is better and right. we don't get to see we're jumping to the next scene where stamus is working on some progenitor tech data or whatever trying to figure stuff out and he turns around and he notices the bug on the wall and it jumps to the other wall and then it cloaks right there in front of him so stamets is clued in and then we jump back to burnham and rayner where we hope to find out what is uh her reaction because you know what if his way is better Right. And uh, they don't get much further in the argument when the ship starts going haywire. And uh, a Washakon says there was an unauthorized transmission from the ship. And they try and double tap. Bing, bing, and they can't. And all of a sudden, we kind of see this weird phasing effect, too. Yeah. And uh, before we go on, though, I got to ask, man, do these fuckers walk anywhere anymore? It's like, hey, meet me here. And it's like, do Double tap, we're in. You know, only when it's in the script. Only when they, when they need to pad for time in the script. I guess so, dude. And of course, <laughs> so we already talked about how the ships are, you know, in pieces. So you'd have to fucking transport to the next part. Yeah, yeah. Hate that. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. So, um, yeah, we jump back to yes. Yeah, so they see there's a phasing effect, and the ship has jumped to warp, as far as we can tell. Um, and they're getting no communications, no transporters. Everything seems like it's knocked out or dead. 
Uh, and this is kind of our sign that we we've entered to into uh, kind of a alternate universes thing, right? Yeah. Well, they they go up to like the bridge, right, and they see Saru, for instance, who's not even supposed to be there, and they're all wearing older uniforms and shit. Yep. And uh, you know, they look like they're knocked out or dead. One, we don't know yet. So um, we appear to just have gone back in time during the Red Angel story arc, occurring Burnham, who was the Red Angel. And then we get the title sequence. Yeah. So after the titles back on the bridge, Rainer says, so we've got, so we've gone back in time to the point where you come forward to the future. That's a little confusing. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny, man. No doubt. Is that confusing? So past Tilly is starting to wake up and burn freaks out. Realizing realizing they can't be seen, you know, prime, uh, temporal directive, prime directive and all that shit. Yep. They move to uh, another part of the ship where no one is at the moment. And they hear Saru make an announcement to brace for impact as, uh, this is supposedly where Detmer crash lands on a planet. I don't remember m most of this stuff. That's how Maybe. little I cared about rewatching <laughs> discovery. Um, Time seems to dilate again, and we see the ship has stopped, and the Golden Gate Bridge is visible out of the bulkhead. It is suddenly gone. Uh, they wonder what's changed, and Burnham nods towards something behind Rainer, and he turns to see a technician. And they appear to be on Earth at the shipyards. And I gotta say, like, how does Rainer or Burnham not notice the fucking giant missing bulkhead is the first thing? Right. It's not the guy behind him. It's like, the bulkhead's missing. You can clearly yeah, you're see missing a wall. <laughs> it's like they did that as an afterthought and they didn't tell the actors on set that that was there. Right. That's what I felt like happened. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, they had to kind of that way. Right. Because they don't look like they even see it. Yeah. So the tech freaks out and he thinks that they're part of an inspection team due the next day. And they, they pass on it and they're just kind of like, yeah, we're. We're here early. Ha ha. Yep. yep, that's it. And he buys it, so he's out. Yeah. They realize they're jumping back through time. They start trying to make sense of everything that's happened so far so uh, they can figure out whether it's a temporal thing or a neural thing. And Burnham realizes that they transported at the exact moment something happened to the ship, and it glitched, glitched them out somehow. So they're yep. kind of piecing shit together. It's a lot of this scene is just long and drawn out. You know, it's just them forever just talking about this, that, and the other thing. You know, we did this, we did that. Um, and another the dilation, way. and they're back at the battle for control. Not control, just that, you know, y'all remember that fucking AI critter. Uh, after some discussion, Rainer realizes it's a time bug, a Krenum chronophage that, uh, Burnham's like, what the fuck? And he says, it's black market weapon left over from a temporal war. They're designed to paralyze a ship by randomly cycling them through time. And Burnham asks how long they last. Rainer says weeks, months, until the little things run out of juice. They reckon it's lock and maul and then continue rehashing what has transpired, just like the last scene, just over and over rehashing what they fucking done, trying to, trying to figure shit out. Burnham points out to Rainer that Reese was right. And of course, I knew that they were going to, that was going to come up. Absolutely saw that one coming a mile away. Um, Burnham also realizes they need to find Stamets because he lives outside of time <clears throat> because of his tardigrade DNA. And he's got water bear genes. Yeah. And I had fucking no memory of that either. So they pulled that tool, that little we chest. Out. Forget about that, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Rainer's response is about like mine too. When, when, when I heard that. What? what fuck uh, uh so we're now in the med bay and we see stamets is on a bed and injured he's got a giant hole in his chest he starts trying to tell the doctor about the bug and that he needs to you know get to in, into engineering but the doctor won't let him he, he knocks him out you know he's just come please 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 let me do it and he just eventually knocks him out Good and we go through another dilation and the cycles back uh the cycles apparently according to burn seem to be getting longer they do an override of Zora detecting their biosignatures, but I I was like, what the fuck? Didn't it shouldn't she have already have detected them like the minute they were there? Didn't quite buy that one. So 
you know, I guess they get a mulligan for that one, but I didn't, I'm not buying that one. I haven't even gotten to the uniform yet. So they come out of the lift, only realize that uh, Osira is attacking Discovery now, and they have to fight their way through these soldiers that are boarding the ship. Um, as they're fighting, Rainer is looking down the barrel of a blaster, and next thing we know, a phaser bolt hits the attacker, and around the corner comes Reno, who we have seen way too little of, in my humble opinion. I don't We've know been getting more yet. of her this season, right? Yeah, she we it's we need more. Like uh it started out with like the first two episodes, I don't think we got but a little glimmer of her. I think we saw a little bit well, of her. I mean just the fact that she was in them. I don't know, she wasn't in the first one unless unless she was in that party scene for a second one. I mean for a second. I don't know, she may have been. Yeah. So uh yeah, around the corner comes Reno, and we see very, uh, we, Burnham runs away before Reno even sees her. And Reno says to Rainer, you're not Discovery Crew. What's your name? And Rainer says, Commander Locke. I'm on temporal side. Uh, tempor- <laughs> temporal <laughs> I'm on temporal side. Yeah. He, he is on temporal <laughs> side. Uh, I'm on temporary assignment. And uh, I'm, I'm calling BS on Reno not asking about the uniform. No. She should have been more suspicious, in my opinion. Dude, This is where the fuck have they seen a red uniform at? that has this design this you know this this uniform is brand spanking fucking new and they're not calling into question why the fuck these people are wearing this uniform i i don't know not buying it especially not that far back in time i don't know Uh, i also think they're kind of setting her up to be like in the know kind of kind of like a almost guinan type character that knows secrets Maybe I mean you because know she was in kind this episode, of... they let on you know that there's some time jumpage going on to her or Stamets does. Well, and yeah, I don't know. He, he they were just kind of that whole thing was just one big comedy scene. Um, I didn't get that. She, I mean, she said she was just kidding. Maybe she, maybe she wasn't. Who knows? So, um, another time dilation. Burnham and Rainer are brought back together. She asks about Reno, and he says everything is kosher. In this timeline, the ship is in pretty bad shape, and Burnham has no idea what what's up or what timeline they're in at all. Because up until now, she's been saying, "Oh, this was this timeline, this was that." It seemed like they were going back in time, right? So yeah, now they're apparently forward in time. They hear K Sara Sara in the distance. And uh, they follow it up to the bridge, and seeing no one is around, Burnham calls out, "Hello." And Zora pipes up, sounding not too great. <laughs> yeah. uh, sounding like she's had a few too many schizophrenic episodes and asked Burnham if that's her or another dream. Apparently, Zora's been doing a lot of dreaming. So Zora says Burnham and the crew died decades ago. She says the year is 3218, and that's almost 30 years in the future, according to Rainer. Burnham asks what happened, and Zora claims her memory is shit and can't remember. And I've got writer device. Y'all know how like (laughs) pull these out. Writer device. I can't remember because yeah, they don't want to fuck up anything for the future that some writers might want to do. Of course, this show's over, so I don't know why it would matter. But you know, for other Star Trek shows, you could really piss in somebody else's pond if you if you do something like that. You know, make up something that doesn't really lend to your story at all. The Omega device. Yeah. So. uh Zora says the outcome Burnham feared has come to pass. The progenitor's technology fell into the wrong hands. Burnham wants to see what's on the other side of the view screen. You know, that view screen has got a a blast shield that can close up on it. So Zora just says you died and doesn't open it. But Burnham is insistent. And finally, the thing starts to open. And we see Federation headquarters almost completely destroyed. Like it's in tatters and just fucked up bad. And Zor said by the time the Federation found Discovery and de- deactivated the chronophage, it was too late. The Breen somehow got the tech and launched a devastating attack a few weeks after they were rescued from the time cycling. Uh, which is where, you know, the Breen, we've just seen a little bit of on Deep Space Nine and stuff, but I really think they are underutilized. I would like to see more, like, straight Breen engagements and stuff. They're just kind of fringe, and they need to be brought more into the mainstream, like the Romulans and the Klingons and stuff. Um, 
So while they're still on the bridge, they start doing some figuring again and come up with a way to see how long they'll have between time jump. And uh, they figure out... He synchronizes their watches. Yeah, they get they get some techno babble and figure things out, and then uh, they figure that one's coming in about 10 seconds, and then we find ourselves with Stamets and Reno in engineering. And we do get a very lovely little playful comedy scene between the two of them. Uh, he attempts to, Stamets attempts to get Serino's thoughts on the bug problem without giving away that he's out of time and what he's doing and you know anything. He's trying to play it off like it's just some you know theoretical shit. Theoretical, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Reno asks if he's stuck in a time loop right now, and he just laughs all fucking nervously and tries to play it off. Very funny. It was hilarious. And uh, Reno says, "Yeah, she's just messing with him after she leaves him hanging for a minute." And uh, we find Burnham hiding behind a console, and she whispers over to Stamets to get his attention. And, uh, they catch up on what's going on, and he tells her he's about to cry. He's so happy to see her. <laughs> and he says he knows where the bug is, exactly where it is. And and he just needs to know that the length of the patterns uh, and Burnham, like the patterns of the time dilations, and Burnham just whips out her fucking you know, uh, hollow deal. And says, "Here you go." And uh, fine. she also does that little "it takes a village" type deal when he says, "Damn, you're just all you know, helpful and shit." And that's obviously a little dig for Rainer. You know, he's this is Rainer's episode, Rainer's lesson episode. If y'all haven't caught on by now, right? Uh, they uh, they come up with a plan and start to engage. They jump again. <laughs> a lot of jumping going on. <laughs> right. And. Uh, they 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 had agreed before jumping by the way that they would meet in a certain location every time they jump just so they can fucking be there ready to go and as soon as they jump or they stand right. coming right out of the lift what was that i said it was engineering or something no, well, yeah, I guess it was right outside engineering because he comes right out of the lift and uh, Stamets says, great news. They have everything I need here to make a chronotime stabilizer. I was like, yeah, that's lucky, isn't it? And the bad news is he needs that's fluid bad. that is only in the tw- uh, 32nd century holodex. Yeah. So they split up to do their thing and find their stuff. Burnham has a holodeck just freshly installed in her uh, quarters or, or ready room or whatever the fuck it is and only she can get to it. And... Uh, Another so little do their thing, and right. Burnham runs into book as, and uh, he's like coming out of the shower, I guess, because he's just got a pair of undies on, and and she, so she's like looking at him like she wants to jump his bones, and uh, she's just trying to get out because they're running out of time, and he's telling her, you know, well, he's just ha- happy to see her, and he tells her he loves her basically, and right. uh, uh, she reciprocates. Which was interesting, wouldn't you say? I don't know. I guess it's one of those things that, that um, I don't know how in agreement she was. It, it wasn't necessarily her opinion to put, put forth as to whether or not you know they should do, stop seeing each other. That was more fronted by him, right? Well, I think it was just the awkwardness between both of them that made him do that. And in, in this situation, that awkwardness is totally gone. And they're just, they're just as normal. That's what I'm saying. Saying she had this chance to go back in time before it got messed up. And now, yeah, apparently her con- conscious is, you know, playing some kind of a part in it. Yeah. Of like maybe she's a bad person, but you know, also they don't have time. Could be. Um, so we meet them back in engineering and they have the device. Burnham brings it near the bug, but it's got some kind of temporal shielding and then they jump again. Time to start over. Fun intended. Now Stamets has come up with a new plan that involves the ship's warp bubble. This is to get past the, the temporal shielding. All right. And, uh, there is a shit ton of techno babble right, right in this whole scene and a lot of BS. So you're welcome to try and suss it out. But basically, uh, they do some shit with a warp bubble to shield somebody from putting their hand through it to where it won't really. It'll just slow down the effects because otherwise it would just turn them to dust. It would age them so fast they'd turn to dust. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and Burnham's job is to try and go convince the old crew that they need to do this thing with the war bubble. And uh, as she's I don't in think the we've said right that that this is a point in time where she's the uh, the mutineer, right? Yeah, this is very early on. She's only been on the ship a few weeks. This is short haired Burnham, mm -hmm. annoying Burnham, gets into every kind of trouble, bullheaded Burnham. Y'all remember her fondly. I remember her fondly as somebody I couldn't stand. And the reason that this show started off on the bad foot with me was that that portrayal. Yeah. Um, she's in the turbo lift, and there's a brief encounter with Linus. It's all a little comedy, and uh, he basically says he loves her in red. Um, the next deck, or he gets off of the next deck, and then Burnham continues on, and the door opens, and there she is, her old self standing there. And uh, New Burnham grabs her in the turbo lift as she's saying security, blah, blah, blah. And she tells her to play that. Old Burnham is still hard-headed as fuck, and they end up fighting, which I think is totally lame. Hated right. that. Um, and she, uh, New Burnham incapacitates Old Burnham with the Vulcan nerve pinch. Right. And we ended up going uh, to Rainer and Stamets, who are having words because he doesn't like the gruff candor of Rainer. Uh, Rainer says Stamets isn't alone and how can he help and they have a little moment so they kind of get that sorted and uh, you know you can see you can see Rainer growing he's evolving throughout right. this episode uh, Burnham makes it to the bridge they try to and tries to convince everyone that she's on the up and up she tells Arium that she's going to die and that seems to convince everybody so that seems to convince Arium. Right. You You're going to die. Okay, yeah. we'll do what you say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was very fucking strange. You know, right. um, not sure how well that was written, really. Stamets Rainer are about to get ready, except old Burnham is still a pain in the ass and shows up with, uh, with Reese and causes a holdup at the very last few, you know, like the last minute. And Rainer has to step up, of course. Uh, you know, I just can't believe they had to wait to the last second on this one. It's right. just one of those devices, man, that they use all the time in television. They just hem somebody up. You know, it'd be like 30 seconds to go, and then somebody wants to have a fucking love moment between, you know, some little moment. And you're like, dude, 30 seconds was up three minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they do the thing with the ship after, uh, you know, Rainer steps up and does his thing, confronts Burnham. Uh, everything goes back to normal. Rainer has a bad old hand now. And of course, before Rainer uh, left to go get his hand fixed, he takes time to tell Burnham that none of what just happened and how they got out of it was lost on him. He and I are so much like it's creepy. Like, this is some weird shit. Um, and at least Burnham finally admits familiar familiarity can lead to complacency. Right. And Rainer admits to being stubborn like Burnham used to be. And uh, she says she still is, just in different ways. She says, we're, we're, we, are, we are always changing. Aren't uh, we all? Yes, it's something I can identify with very much uh, right now because I'm big into myself evolving, uh, especially over the last couple of years, two or three years now. So, yeah, I'm all about the uh, ever-changing person. If you're not changing and evolving, you're, you're just getting older and dying right yeah you're just you're just stagnant dude you're not doing yeah. nothing standing still uh so you know they both came came away as a team and rainer says we, we got the job it. done yeah we <laughs> did it bro we're bad yeah. at yeah, high five it's a punch in the sky in for the sure. air. right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we see Stamets picking the uh, dead bug up and Tal walks in and asks what's up and Stamets says long story she says, uh, would it have something to do with why I just blinked in six hours of somehow gone by? Yeah, so that was great. It's very little towel in this, very little Tilly. It was very nice. Uh, we're back on the bridge. Everyone's having a big laugh, rehashing the events. Rainer comes in shortly after with a brand new hand. Yay, I got a new hand. And Burnham asks about Lock and Maul, and Rainer, you know, uh, praises Reese for his good work, and they all get warm fuzzies inside and they get to solve in the next clue and scene participation trophy participation trophies all around that's right man yep 
If you like hugs and warm, fuzzy feelings, then you'll love Discovery. All right. But I got to say, yeah, ultimately coming away from this episode, uh, it's a Rainer episode. It wasn't a lot of the crew. It's Rainum and Burner. It was uh, a two-hander in many parts. Yeah. So uh, I liked it. I thought it was a good episode. It uh, it was nice like being reminded of some of the old stuff because, I, like I said, I forgot a lot of it. Um, I thought it it kind of helped convey what what Rainer was doing, you know, his little uh, evolving there, what and how they were trying to get him there. Um, content wise, like it's not like some overwhelming story. Yeah, it's a connector story, if you will, right? Because this it's like I said before, we're going to get these stories in between because they there's only five pieces, right? Five clues, five pieces to this map, we assume, right? So well, there's eight least, episodes, right? right we got at least thinking. eight episodes. So only five episodes are going to have like major things happening. And then we're going to have these little connector stories in between. And that's what this was. So yep. uh, being a connector story, it was way better than the other connector story we had the other day, yeah, a couple weeks ago. So uh, I would say that this is definitely a solid four for me. I don't know. I'm going to put it at three again. That's um, fine. I can see why you would do that. Yeah, I, I told you. I, I fell asleep. Like yeah, there at the end. <laughs> there's really not much to it, but I'm such a fan of Rainer, and uh, I'm happy to see him dress down people. And it's just nice, you know. I mean, it's a good Rainer episode, and that's why I got the extra point for me. Otherwise, it would be a three because there's really not that much to it. But it didn't use too many fucking rider devices, which was nice. Yeah. It didn't over Tilly or Talmy, which was nice. So, I mean, it's getting all bonus points for that shit. Um, and I love a good time story. What can I say? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, what, as soon as I saw like 15 hours before, I was like, oh, great. We're going to do a time jump. It's going to be a time heist. Yeah. And I did hate that too. Like, because we've already seen that this season already, you know. Yeah. You know, what was it before? Four hours or something like that? I think yeah, four hours. First episode it starts right out with that shit. So yeah. that's get uh, that's a writer device getting used to often. And that's so I only really saw two major offenses writing wise. Maybe three. The 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 uniform thing, dude. I mean, like they should have wrote a simple fucking we change into a uniform, somebody else's uniform while we're you know, doing all yeah. this jumping and shit. So I think a holographic the, projector, isn't that a thing they've used in the past? I mean, come on, dude, something <laughs> they can do. But honestly, I think they kept it there only for us, the audience. Yeah. So we didn't get confused. They had that stupid fight scene in there. And I ultimately think it was only in there for that. Maybe. That's what you have to do when you, when you're doing a fight scene and you're trying not to confuse the audience about who is who, like you got to make them different somehow. Usually Different one colors, red and blue. Yeah, or one of them's, you know, got a busted up face and one of them's clean looking. No, in Berm's case, she has the different hair. I don't think they needed to keep the uniform. I mean, it's quite clear that one's different from the other. But, uh, yeah, so wasn't majorly disappointed, wasn't overly excited. It was, you know, just a connector episode. And, Another episode. Uh, it is what it is, man. So next week we'll do uh, episode five. Y'all can expect that one, and we'll. I'm sure it'll be a much more uh, based on the arc, the story arc that we're dealing with this season that that episode will deal with. Uh, well, I mean, given that we've only got three more episodes and there's three more parts, right? Yeah. I mean, they've got to get to it, man. Get to it. Are we sure there's only eight episodes? I don't know that for a fact. I, I just I'm it's imagining. It's consistent. That. Yes, we know that much, but things have changed at times. So we'll see. Yeah, and while we're waiting and seeing, and you guys are waiting on us to come back with another episode, just remember, as always, be excellent to each other, yeah? And Brian and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks Peace out, everybody. guys. Thank you so much.